Welcome back to another video and in today's episode, well, we will fix an issue that we are no longer going to be able to build on the walls and anywhere else where we are overlapping something, including building on top of the object, the old object itself as well. Now, previously in the survival game series, uh, if we had a build like this and it could snap to next to it, it was ignoring everything and it was allowing to build there. I will show you how to set that up, but I'm going to leave in my project and this one right here, I'm going to leave it as blocked. So it does not allow us to continue building if there is a wall. So let's get started. So let's get it started. Let's go to our buildings folder. Let's open up our build component. And inside of this component, uh, we're gonna need to add ourselves a new function. Now let's call this uh, check for overlap. So basically we're gonna look whether something else might be overlapping or buildable. And if it is, well, then we are not going to be allowed to build something. And this way it's going to forbid us to build inside of the walls like we previously were able to. So, uh, we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need to grab our build ghost first. We're going to need to get the component bounds. So, get component bounds. So, this is essentially going to return us a basically like a box around our around our around our, uh, every single one of our buildables. And then what we want to do is we want to run ourselves a box trace by channel. There we go. Now for this trace channel, uh, we're gonna use the visibility so that everything that's visible is gonna get blocked and our collision boxes are gonna get ignored for that. That's exactly what we wanna do. Now we have a start and end position. So for the start, we wanna use the origin point and for the end, well, we're gonna use the origin point as well. Now for the half size, we wanna use the box extent and it's gonna give us the half size of this object. Now, real quick, let's uh, enable the visuals so that we can actually see what's going on. So for that, let's go ahead, let's make this for duration. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Now let's make sure that we actually run this and we're gonna run this inside of our cycle. So we have our build cycle over here, this guy right here. So we're doing this code. So if we hit something, it tries to detect the boxes and for now, let's just do it before the delay, but we're gonna move it to a different location later. So for now, let's just place it over here and let's see what happens. So now if we hit play, press B, you will see that there is a box around. So for duration, it prints a lot of them. So I'm just gonna do for one frame. And then yeah, just like before in the build cycle, we have it over here. So let's hit play now. There we go. So now we have it for just one frame. So it doesn't leave the boxes there. But as you can see, we have like a tiny green thing around our buildable. But the issue is that it constantly keeps on hitting something. As you noticed, there is the red, red square in at least usually in the top uh, bottom left corner. But as you can see for this one, it is a little bit more to the right. But all the other ones seem to have it mostly on the left or in the middle part of the mesh. So the issue with this is that it is hitting something and we don't want it to hit anything. So what we are going to do is we're going to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna grab the box extent. So the origin point still stays the same. We, it basically creates the box trace from the middle of the model. And the box extent basically gives like the information where are the outer edges. And obviously the outer edges are going to collide with the ground because that's where it's getting placed. So for the box extent, I'm just gonna uh, divide this, uh, let's divide this with a float so we can give this a small value. So let's give this like 0.2 for now and plug that into the half size. So now it should make it a little bit smaller. So now, uh, looks like that didn't do it. Oh, I think I, I made it even bigger. So we want to multi uh, multi divide this by like 1.2 instead, 1.2. Here we go. So that seems to be a little bit better. Uh, let me enable it for duration so that actually I can see the color a little bit better. There we go. So now it's red. So now if it is red, that means it is not colliding with anything. So let's just wait for a little bit. It's going to draw us like a nice thick line. There we go. We can see it inside of our buildable. That's nice. So now it will allow us to basically overlap things just a tiny bit as you can see. 
it's gonna allow us to overlap it this much if it's too much make it a little bit smaller and it's gonna forbid us from building in the walls now so let's make this thing let's get this thing into the action so what we are going to do is do an if branch check from over here and then we are going to return just add a return node and let's provide this uh, we don't even need a branch actually we can just return the return value like so and let's give this uh, did uh, let's just type in hit so it's gonna tell us true or false if it hit or if it didn't there we go that's good now back in our build cycle let's remove it from here and now here comes the configuration basically so you have to think about if you want so we have the de detection collision boxes that decide where to snap the builds next to if you want them to always regardless of any other conditions to build there then what you want to do is run this thing only from the false route if you want to run this always well then you might want to run it through both of those so i'm going to run it through both of those at this point but later i'm going to show you what happens if we run it through just one of them so we're going to do this we're going to run a if branch check now if it's false we're all good we can proceed with making it green because we didn't hit anything but if we did hit something i want to make the build coast red instead so i'm going to run this code right here so is green is going to be false and then we can proceed with the delay so it's going to like look like this so if we hit something it's red if we don't hit anything it's green and it's just fine so let's give it a test so it's green and you can see now on the wall it is red so let's just for a sec let's disable the uh, debug so we don't see those lines here we go uh, we can still build over there which is very interesting that it is allowing us to build inside of there so you might have to have a look at some collision settings with these objects right here apparently they are getting ignored for some reason but we are not allowed to build up there anymore and we can still build these next to each other so as you can see now we are also forbidden to build over here because they are getting blocked as you can see nicely and we can also build our walls now if you made your collision boxes a little bit wrong uh, you might have an issue that these are not getting allowed to build there they might become red and that is because well the collision box is a little bit too big and they are getting overlapped so either you go back to the video where i showed you how to create uh, the custom collision boxes and make them a little bit smaller or lower down the box extent on this one so that it is a little bit lower rather than being this high so let's give it a test with the doors see if we can place the doors in here we go we can do that still we can put the windows in there we go so everything seems to be functioning just fine if you're having issues that you can no longer stack things then well first and foremost we have the uh th this thing right here so we change the transform and regardless of if we found or if we didn't find a snapping location we are still checking for the overlap now if you want to ignore uh everything and so what i mean by that is if i build it over here you can see i'm no longer avail able to build over there because it's overlapping right so if this will be overlapping one another this one also will then be forbidding to build there we can bypass that we can bypass that by moving this check for overlap so let's disconnect it let's disconnect it from uh, actually let's just move this whole thing down so what we did previously was we made it green like so regardless of what we hit and then we do the delay uh, the build delay so we're going to do it like this like we did before but the false route in this case will come from down here so from the false if we did not find a collision box we check whether it is overlapping something and then if it is overlapping something then we make it red if it's not then we just simply make it green so now with this specific code we should be still able to build inside of walls obviously we can't build the first one but the second one will gladly go and build itself into the walls and it's also going to allow itself to be built on one another because well uh, we are basically uh, ignoring the check for uh, the overlap if it finds a box it's just okay cool i'm just gonna build there 
like I said, I don't want that in my system. So I'm going to bring it back the way it was before. So I'm going to make it like so. And now it's going to check regardless of if there is a collision box or if it's not there. It's going to always check whether I'm allowed to build something. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. So this is going to automatically work for all the buildables. It's going to grab the static mesh and it's going to do everything depending on that static mesh. Now make sure that, of course, always make your collisions proper so that you don't have these issues. Make sure that those collision boxes maybe are a little bit slightly bit smaller than the actual model itself. Like I mentioned previously, if you want it to... Uh, overlap objects a little more or a little less because you will see that over here we can build a little bit inside of the wall as you can see see we can build a little bit and once we get to over there there it is it's getting blocked right we are allowed to build a little bit inside of it because in the check for overlap we have this division right so if you don't want it just leave it out plug in one uh, this way it does overlap a little bit so you can do like oh 1.01 .01. so it's a little bit smaller uh, not enough so I guess I made some bad collision boxes so like 0.03 maybe now still not it these walls are good yeah, I guess it's my collision boxes are not exactly up for it maybe like 0.01 there we go. So now I should be able to build a little less inside of the wall. Here we go. And if I want to make it like really big, we can make it like 0.5 and now it's going to go a lot into the wall as you can see. So it's totally up to you how you make these changes, how you configure this whole thing. Uh, real quick, so I'm going to make it back at 0.2. Let's have a look what's wrong with these ones. So it doesn't seem to care about these ones. So let's have a look at the collision presets. We have a custom. Everything seems to be all right. This is interesting uh, because this one should have been blocked as well. That's an interesting one. So let's go ahead and let's see why doesn't it really care. So let's go ahead. Let's make this for duration again. Let's have a quick look. So apparently it doesn't hit at all. This object it does hit. It doesn't want to hit these objects right here. For some reason it just doesn't seem to care about these. So we are using the visibility trace channel. And these objects right here. Okay. Now that's not it. Still the overlap. Doesn't care about the overlap events. So the collision rules are all the same. Okay, so I found the issue for these objects right here. These objects right here are using the complex collision. Complex collision always gives issues. It's a bad idea to use it. Uh, there's problems with physics. There's problems with overlap events. There's problems with replication. There's problems on top of problems for problems, problems. So always problems. So go ahead, open those objects up. Uh, usually, like, you're not going to be using these default objects. You're going to have your own models. So make sure that your models have a proper collision. So this guy right here, if we scroll down, you will see that the collision complexity is set to use complex collision. And that's an issue. As you can see, this is the complex collision. It should be using the project default, which is the simple collision, and you need to adjust it properly. You might have to set up your own collision, set up may maybe multiple collision boxes for this one. What I would do is I would have a cube over here, the lower part, I would have another one over here, and I would have a third one for this, uh, this edge this angled edge right here. So I would have three collision boxes for that just to fix this. And that's 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 what you're supposed to do. You gotta make your yourselves a decent collision. And it's like I said, it's always way better to use a proper custom collision rather than using the complex collision. I get it, it's a lot quicker to just set up a complex collision, uh, but it's a lot more performance, it's a lot more issues, it's a lot more problems. Uh, so yeah, if you fix that, then there should be no more issues as long as the object is blocking the visibility trace channel and as long as it has the regular simple collision, everything should be fine and you should not be able to build inside of those objects. Now, by this point in the series, you probably already noticed that if we do not turn on the build mode and if we use our mouse wheel and then close the game, 
we receive this error right here that X is not trying to read the property build ghost in this set mesh thing right here. Now the issue with this is that well there's two fixes we could check whether the buildable is valid before we before we do the change mesh or we can just do, kill the error at the very root which is over here on the mouse wheel. So essentially what is happening is that we are trying to change the mesh of the buildable but the buildable is non-existent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab all of these nodes right here and bring those back a little bit because we're gonna use the same logic we used over here. So we're gonna check if the build mode is on and also whether the buildable is valid and we're gonna do an if branch check on that. So let's go ahead and let's do that real quick. So we just copy those nodes to over here, bring it down here, do an if. So if it's true, then we proceed with changing the ID on pressed and we do the same thing down here below as well. We check whether those two are true and if those two are, if those two are true, then we can proceed with the code. Otherwise, well, it just simply is not going to do anything. So that's an easy and quick fix. So now if we press play, use our mouse wheel, close the game, the error no longer appears. So really quickly, before we end this video, small information. So we can build our foundation. As you can see, it works just fine, but the floor does not seem to work. As you can see, it's constantly red. It doesn't care. It's just all the time red. We can still build it up there. And I'm going to have it be this way. Uh, the floor is not going to be allowed to build, be built on the ground. We're going to need to make foundation first. And then we will be able to build this ground slash ceiling. And, but I'm going to explain the issue why we cannot build uh, that thing on the ground. That is because if we grab this asset, so the floor ceiling, bring it into the world, as you can see, the majority of the mesh is below the ground. And that is because the pivot point is very high. It's just fine for my system. I don't care. I don't want to be placing this on the ground. But if you do want to place like the floor on the ground, then make sure you bring this into the modeling software and bring the pivot point down. So that when you bring it into Unreal, it would look something like this when you place it in the world rather than what we have right now. The issue is that our get component bounds fun uh, function, essentially, this one right here is returning the bounds for the entire mesh. It doesn't really care that much about collisions. It just cares about the mesh itself. And as you can see, since the majority of this is underground, obviously, it's going to be overlapping the ground and it's not going to allow us to build it here. Now, like I said, if you want to fix this, bring this into the blender. You can right click when you have these assets in your Unreal. You can right click them. You can go to assets actions and you can export this export to an FBX and then just simply go ahead and change the pivot point of it in any modeling software and bring it back in and it's going to be just fine. So that's going to be it for today's episode. If you found this useful, make sure to hit that subscribe button uh, to not miss the upcoming episodes and yeah, see you in the next one.